two days ago, I heard from strategists, even in our own party, who were saying, oh my God, she shouldn't be talking about, you know, the negativity of Donald Trump. She needs to focus on herself. She needs to bring the joy back. Now that she's brought the joy back, you have people saying, oh, well, she should be making the contrast. I think they have run this campaign incredibly well, and they have the data, they understand what people want, and to your point, when you have Donald Trump filleting a microphone and talking about how they want he wants to shoot uh, Liz Cheney and talking about how happen. Puerto Rico is an island of trash. He didn't say that. 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 He didn't say the comments that he made about Liz Cheney, as we discussed on the show on Friday after he made them, he talked about how uh, if she's sending people to war, how would she feel if there were guns pointed at her? Those comments were not appropriate. They weren't a firing squad, but they were also not appropriate. But what is your... On you the, were saying that she yeah, is, on, she's running on a negative campaign. They're, well, they're, they're actually pivoting into yeah. the final stages right now, yes, and yes, that's the message. Yes, here with a, a handful of hours to go. I mean, she doesn't have to attack Donald Trump, I guess, because she's done it every single day of the campaign since she got into it. It's been a relentlessly negative and relentlessly dishonest campaign. And here at the end, they want credit for trying to be positive and, and unifying after a week of... Republicans are Nazis. Republicans are garbage. <laughs> Republican women are weak and stupid. So I, I get it. I understand why they would want to tout this one time that she didn't relentlessly go negative and dishonest against Donald Trump. But to me, the bulk of the campaign is obvious. It is they are betting all their chips on there's just enough people in the country who hate or are willing to fear Donald Trump to win. That's about all they've got. So wait, are, is the pro hold on. When, is the problem... The negativity and the dishonesty, because if that were the case, then I would expect you to criticize Trump for that, too. Uh, look, I, I think Donald Trump has run a campaign of some negativity and also some of what I want to do. Some negativity. And I think Kamala Harris has been frightfully vague so do you about think what that she wants been, to do. Who's been more negative, Kamala Harris or Donald Trump? Harris. Without question. Oh, come on, Scott. <laughs> so Scott are Scott, you Scott, serious? I, 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 I think that you are a very good representative of conservatives who uh, are more aligned with Trump, obviously, than Harris. But I think that it would be dishonest to not acknowledge that Donald Trump goes up on that stage almost every day. He doesn't even focus on his opponent's policies. He calls her stupid mm -hmm. every day. I, I think it would every be... Every day, literally I, every day. And, and, and I personally think it would be dishonest not to acknowledge that the bulk of the attacks that Kamala Harris lodges against Donald Trump range from basically dishonest to absolutely, I can't believe they're getting away with this dishonest. On policy, on, on all sorts of things. And I just, I, I feel like this goes unacknowledged because of how Trump operates. And I fully admit that he says things that get our attention and that, that sound outrageous. And incredibly but negative. we but we don't hold her to the same level of accountability. And the because bulk of their campaign against the Trump has been ahead, a it's been she sits on a throne no. of dishonesty when it comes to his agenda. He did not write Project 2025. Oh, he did not put it in a book. He does not hand it out. And that is the bulk of their campaign, and it's ridiculous. Well, well, he did do Agenda 47, which is actually Come on. Well, no, that's his. That's his. It's on his website. Agenda yeah, 47. Yeah, but it's not no, no, this it's like, book and that it's they worse. keep talking about. And it's worse than <laughs> the book. It's like, I, I Why? Thought, but the, well, because all the stuff that people are mad about in Project 2025, the worst of it is actually in Agenda 47. People, if you're at home, yeah. please Google it. Here's, but here's what, <laughs> here's what I would say. Um, you're frustrated with Kamala Harris. You somehow think she's been given some kind of a cakewalk. I see it very, I see, <laughs> yes. I see it very differently. If Kamala Harris were saying and doing the things that Donald Trump is doing, mm -hmm. can you imagine a black woman saying the things that Donald Trump says, doing the things that Donald Trump does? I just, it, it's, it's inconceivable. She, she would be polling at like 2% yeah. in, our, in our party. And so I just think that we're kind of through the looking glass. Different people see it different ways. I think it's very hard to argue that Donald Trump, that, that anybody but Donald Trump can get away with the stuff he's, he's doing. But we're talking about how, we, how we're closing. I just want to get back to that. Kamala Harris has made a decision that she wants to close on a positive message. She keeps being accused that she's, she's too vague. Mm -hmm. She did a two-week tour 
hitting every uh, media outlet that she could. She put out actual concrete proposals and policies after policies after policies after. She was, it was like she, she turned into Hillary Clinton for about two weeks. Yeah. People still t said she was being too vague. And now she's turning to being, being more positive. I'm not sure that that's a great idea, but I trust, I, I, because, I tell you why, because I, uh, Scott thinks that we, we've been too nice to Donald Trump. I, I think we should be harder on go Donald hard, Trump. And the go and hard, the go home. But, 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 but <laughs> I do, I, I think we should be, I think we should. I think we but should, but does, does, yes. do you think there is a single voter out there who has not yet heard enough negativity about Donald, like one more negative thing would help you win? I, I will talk about it well, in my hot take. Let me let me ask. Well, <laughs> I, I think that's a good question I love for Chris. <laughs> I remember when we after the um, the the town hall that we did with Harris, there was there were a bunch of Pennsylvania voters, and several of them were like, "Enough with the negativity. We are tired of hearing negative yeah, things." Yeah, yeah. Even though negativity does work, it does work. I mean, is it wise for her to go positive at this stage? Uh, I think so, in part because I think voter views of Donald Trump are so well established. People know how they feel about him. And we have been sitting around tables like this for eight, nine years now, mm -hmm. where Donald Trump says something nutty and everybody goes, is this the thing that's going to make everybody not like him anymore? And every single time his numbers barely budge. They budged after something big like January 6th. Mm -hmm. But him standing up at a rally and saying something nutty yet again doesn't move it. And so that's why I think for Harris, the question for voters who go, oh, I hate this election, is can she cross a threshold yes. of credibility? Can she cross a threshold of, okay, fine, maybe I could live with her as president for four years.